Lagi aje buburuyi. Permit me to call on the person I will call the first son of our spiritual father. His grace by Baladura, Prophet Samuel Adifila Abidoy, who is the presiding pastor, Living Faith Church, otherwise known as Winners Chapel, distinguished Christian fold, distinguished Nigerians. Permit me to call on Bishop David Olaniyi Oyedepo. Thank you very much, sir. Please continue to clap. Continue to appreciate God. Continue to appreciate God until he gets there. Until he gets to this place. When he gets there, I will ask you to stop. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you will go out that and you are that old, and you are that old. Out that well, out that rubo. I don't want to pull the wheel. I want to go machine. I want to go more machine. I want to put you on my wall. I want to stand on behalf of the family. To deeply appreciate the church for the honor, for all of the ways we have celebrated our departed father. May the Lord continue to bless this church. May this church continue to go forward. May the vacuum left be fully filled by the power of God. This church shall not know a setback in the name of Jesus. What the of note is that um, just barely two months before he departed, I was with him. Our best of time is the humor that exhumes from him. It appears to be part of our lineage. Humor, laughter, saying things from a positive perspective. It was much my longest time of staying with him, we have we had several pictures taken together as if saying bye bye. Just barely seven, eight weeks after that, he went to glory. I want to say we miss him as a family. A pillar of unity, a pillar of pulling the people together and minding everyone to the best of his ability. That informs why all members of the family was right at the center of the event since this program began. And may the Lord bless every member of the family. To all the biological children, greater days lie ahead. Everyone shall live much longer, live healthier, 
and live stronger in the name of Jesus. Uh, to the leadership of the church, I want to say thank you, sir, for all that you have done in keeping his tenor a most fulfilling one. Thank you. It was very comfortable. You did a lot. And to God be all the glory. Again, on behalf of all that you have come to celebrate with us, be blessed and be honored for all that you have been in making this departure such a colorful one. God bless you all. That was the presiding pastor of the Living Faith Church, Bishop David Oyedepo, who has just paid glowing tributes to our late father, his grace, Babaladra Prophet Samuel Adefila Peter. On this note, the last on this section the representative of the Deputy Governor of Quara State, His Excellency Kayo De Alabi. He'll be represented here by the immediate past Kan Chairman Quara State, Professor Evangelist Timothy Opola. Thank you very much. Sir. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm Evangelist Professor T. Opola, the Chairman of the Christians Pilgrims Welfare Board, Quara State, and the former Chairman of Christian Association of Nigeria, Quara State. I'm here to represent His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Quara State. Mr. Kayo Labi, who himself loves so much to be here, but because of the st a state assignment, is unable to be here today. And he has sent me to be here to greet the leadership of the church, CNS movement worldwide, the family of our late father, and the entire members of the CNS Movement Church worldwide. On this occasion of a celebration of life of our late father, Baba Aladura, a great leader of the church, a visionary leader, a great man of God, his grace, Baba Aladura Prophet Dr. Samuel, Adefila Abidoye, the spiritual father, the spiritual head, and chairman CNS movement, church worldwide, who God has called to his eternal glory. His Excellency acknowledged that a great leader of the church has passed on to glory from Quara State, and that all his works will never be forgotten by the government of Kwara State. His Excellency acknowledge the great work of the entire church of CNS movement, church in Kwara State, for all the developmental contribution to the growth of Kwara State. His Excellency prays that God will be with the family of our late father, God will be with the leadership of the church, Sanders movement worldwide, and God will continue to be with the entire church members. He prays that God will move the church from strength to strength, and that a great grace will be bestowed upon the church, even as a great leader of great grace has passed on to glory. He said God will never leave his church alone, and as Jesus said, the gate of hell will never prevail against the church. His Excellency bless everyone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you and God bless.
Jeje Kalo, Si Galili, Alopa de Jesu, Ulura Pada. Eje Kalo, Si Galili, Alopa de Jesu, Ulura Pada. Eje Kalo, Biba Bashe Sofu Wakoto Lok, Alopa de Jesu. Olura pada otia eje kalo siga lili alopa de jesu olura ganini to so fun wa ra o ati oyin ibu kun be ni be ure o fe nbe ni be yara tete wa gba yin gbala lodo baba ore o fe a yin lo si won Ore mi je kalo o ore e je kalo singa lili kalo pa de jesu o ba oke o ya na e je kalo se o ninu apara jesu la wa ti ba i jande o lati du o lori appreciate the floral committee for coming calling me to say a word or two today on behalf of our late father mentor Baba Ladura his great prophet Dr. Samuel Adifila Abidoye I'm not surprised that uh, they have to call on me yesterday to give a short message this morning I'm the firstborn in the spiritual realm of Baba Abidoye. It's not surprising that the biological children will know that they know me with Baba very much. 
before I continue, I want to stand on the existing protocol. But before then, let me appreciate my father in the Lord, most senior special apostle, Prophet Dr. E.A. Alobo, very soon the incoming Baba Aladra in a new dispensation. Your grace, sir. At the same time, my father, who is also sitting very close to him, his most eminent Solomon Nadeboyega Laos, Richard Paul II, Supreme Head Olori and Education Worldwide. We have met several both in America, in London, and even in Nigeria. God bless you, and mommy, God bless you, ma. All the Babaladras, your grace, your eminence, all the royal highnesses and imperial majesty, you are beautifully welcome. At the same time, I also want to welcome my father of Minas International Ministry, Dr. Bishop Oyedepo. You are welcome, sir. God bless you. Praise the Lord. My time is very much limited this morning. The passage we have been given, it has been read. It says, Revelation chapter 3, from verses 1 to 6. I'm only going to read verse 5 for the message, the book of life. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Verse 6, he who has an ear, let him hear what the priest says to the churches. Praise the Lord. In a nutshell, why we are here today, going to be the first thing I want to let us hear and understand. Our father, an icon, a mentor, father of fathers, an achiever, late Babaladra is grace, prophet Dr. Samuel Adefila Abidoye. I met him first in America in 2004. For David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. Acts 13, verse 36, New King James Version. I don't know where to begin with Baba. We are here today to see the works of a man of God, a man of integrity, a man of faith, a man who was called and chosen, anointed for a purpose. We see him as a great achiever and king of fathers. He was my father in the Lord. Still my father in the Lord. No one is actually dead until the ripples of the cause in the world dies away. Late Baba Ladra is grace, prophet. Esa Abidoye, spiritual father. And physical ripples will serve as his legacies. As a visionary leader, God gave him a great assignment. One Saturday in October 20, 2009, God directed him to the Bible in Matthew 26, verse 32. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. The vision threw him into confusion. That he had to tell his former personal PA, Moses Apostle, Pastor Moses Uluyami then, who told Baba to calm down, that God will revisit him for the meaning and details of his dream. That nobody will interpret this for you, but the Almighty God that appeared to you will appear to you. And as a matter of fact, it happened. Three days later, God again visited Baba. So mightily that told him very clearly, where you gather together, call it Galilee. Where you gather together, call it Galilee. By God designed the issue resurfacing in 2010, 
four years after he had assumed office, a powerful delegation for Galilee land proceeded to kilometer 24 by the Ilonin Expressway. Some of the elders who went exclaimed, Ha! Say, no, you go in Yabido in Kua Bobai. Interpreter to me, Ha! Is this the wilderness Yabido is leading also? I'm saying this not to mock those who said it. That was the vision they have. But Baba had a greater vision from God. It is difficult for a visionary leader to mingle with mediocres who perhaps will only be known in their moment, but they are not forward-looking. Baba was forward-looking. Three days, we are you gathered together, call it Gali. We see where little minds don't easily catch vision. The invisible they see, the visible always make them to know that they are on earth. Baba's vision was a miracle from not enough to more than enough. But the children of Joseph said, the mountain country is not enough to, for us in Joshua 17, 6. The revelation has moved this church to more than enough. Our ego, our wilderness has turned to a city with modern infrastructure in Paris. Of this, we know Baba I interacted with him so much. We are so close. Because he was a man of vision. Vision is the one of the principal essentials of success in leadership. Having a clear vision, which he had, was a specific goal for success, is very fundamental to progress in the human endeavor. Helen Keller once said, a woman who, has, who was blind and deaf all her life, said, the most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but has no vision. In the same way, vision is not negotiable for anyone who wants to succeed. Vision helps us to see the possibilities of tomorrow, which Baba Bido is saw, that there's something in this church that want to emerge if we go to Galilee. Even though it was a forest, there's something there that God wants to bring out. That that forest will turn to a mega city. Now it's turning. You can see the structures here. More are coming. It's going to be an international mega city for the church. The C. Jerevin and Seraphim Church movement was born with great charge. He was a man of courage. Baba was a man of courage. He faced a lot of civil opposition in Kaduna, in London, in America, and the General Conference. But his courage of God's truth saved him from impeachment many times. Courage is rightly considered the most of the virtues for any visionary leader. Secondly, Baba was committed to his call. Baba's legacy of commitment cannot be overemphasized. The greatest days of your life are the days when you sense your commitment to its highest degree. He was a man of initiative. The Babaladra was a man of great initiative. Initiative is doing the right thing without being told. The secret of success is sitting in doing something tangible and profitable at all times. Success seems to be connected with action. Baba was a man of action to the core. Baba never, was never afraid of taking a big step. The important thing is to concentrate upon what you can do yourself, upon your own initiative. Furthermore, one of his legacy that why we are gathering today is because Baba made a lot of sacrifice. Baba made a lot of sacrifice. Baba was willing to give was willing to give something good for something better, even when it appeared unachievable and impossible by people's ugly comments and threats. Life is full of boundless possibilities, but in order to transform a possibility into reality, we have to choose sacrificing many things to make things happen. It did so. Among what it made me to understand, when I had a revelation for him that Baba 
Supposing you are called to be Baba Lord, I say, and he answered, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. John 3, 37. On getting to Nigeria, he became the Baba Ladra. Leadership as a leader, he has the capacity to translate vision to reality, which he did, and this is why we are here today. For all of us who are here, who are celebrating Baba Ladra, a day is coming when you and I shall be celebrated for what you have been able to do, whether little or big. Baba was so knowledgeable that he transformed the church to a living church by creating some other arms of the church as modern parishes. This is a living church that makes us to understand that some of us who really wanted to check out remain in the church, that there's future in this church. And that is why we are here. So many of us who have checked out to somewhere else, we are here because of Baba's vision. Baba's legacies are visible, cannot be forgotten, and we pray that we so rest in peace. On that note, the topic of today, the book of life. As we have had in Revelation chapter 3, the church in Sardis had a reputation of being alive, but that church was dead. Body of church Christ or individual can be dead if they have no Christ. What they had, what Jesus saw in them, he saw only a few of his members who remained who faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Outwardly, the church appeared spiritually alive and active and had a reputation of success. But Jesus says, saw the absence of the inner reality of Christ, of Christ in their lives. There was no Christ in their hearts. They were so good looking outside, but no Christ in their lives. He saw religion. He saw not any spiritual life. This is a warning to us at this end time. That when Jesus comes, will you go to meet a church that has faith in Christ only and not just religious bigotry? If people inside it throughout the life of church history, there have always been a few a remnant who have not sold their clothes and who have sought to return to the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ only, even the apostles and many others. In the New Testament, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, says, But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may be hard astray or led astray from sincere and pure de devotion to Christ. I pray that in this end time, our name should be written in the book of life as our commas. But we have to take a step. Clearly, his voice indicates the very real clarity of the verse, possibility of members in the body of Christ having their names written in the book of life, that is those who have preserved faith in Christ. Those who are regenerated, those who are born again, those who are in the new life, those who are celebrating Christ, the crucified, those who are presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that man can have salvation. He that hath and ye let him hear. Paradise of God in Second Corinth, in Second Revelation chapter two verse seven says, "An overcomer is one who, by God's grace, received through faith in Christ. He has explained the new birth and remains constant in victory over sin, the world system, and Satan. He is surrounded by great opposition. He overcome." He refused to conform to the world system and to any ungodliness within the visible church and its lukewarm outlook outwards into culture. They hear what the Holy Spirit says and respond. They remain faithful to Christ to the way to the very end. They accept only God's standard as revealed by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. What is our charge today? Hold fast and re. Repent. Hold fast and repent. 
And that will take me to Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. In the historical account of King Solomon, the location of the temple recorded in 2 Chronicles 7, we witness a profound moment of divine communication. After Solomon finished praying, the Lord appeared to him, affirming his presence in the temple and promising to hear the prayers of his people. However, God also issued a solemn call to action, a divine participation for healing a nation in crisis like Nigeria. By this note, I pray, God will visit Nigeria. God will take over Nigeria. God will visit our churches and take over the church. What we need is to repent. Humility, God's call begins with humility. Humbling ourselves involves acknowledging our dependence on God, recognizing our own shortcomings. It is a posture of surrender, total surrender to God, where we lay aside pride, self-sufficiency, and knowledge our need for divine intervention. Prayer is needed. They call us the Aladuras. We should go back to the basis of being a prayerist. Nigeria needs prayer. The world needs prayer. Our families need prayer. Individual here, we need prayer. May God answer our prayers. But any prayer you offer in the name of Jesus will be answered. No other power, no other name is above that name. Prayer is our direct communication with God in times of trouble. Prayer becomes our lifetime. God gives his people to come to him in prayer, bringing their concerns, their burdens, their needs before him. Through prayer, we express our trust in God's sovereignty and invite his intervention for Nigeria. May God intervene in Nigeria, seeking God's face, seeking God's face always beyond our religious rituals. It's about pursuing intimacy with God, our relationship with God. Our God is a covenant-keeping God. For any call, for any Christian, for any ministry, for any church, he has a covenant. If we are able to maintain that covenant and we do things according to his divine will, then we see results. But where we digress and do other things, then we see Christianity as perhaps not a living uh, church. Repentance, turning from wicked ways is very essential. Step towards spiritual renewal and national restoration. Repentance involves a genuine acknowledgement of sin. We must know that we are sinners. Without Christ and his blood, we are still sinners. But once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you can be sure that you will enjoy the grace of salvation. May we from this day repent from our sin and accept the grace of Jesus for our salvation in Jesus' name. The willingness to turn away from sinful behavior and the commitment to live in obedience to God's command. It is a radical change of heart and direction, fueled by a desire to please God and walk in his ways. In conclusion on that, we see prayer, we see humility, we see repentance, we see seeking his face as a timeless blueprint for spiritual revival. I pray that may God grant us spiritual revival in our churches we must stop chasing for positions. We must pursue the great commission to win souls to the kingdom of God. That was what Baba Bidio was giving. That within five years, we must be able to win five million souls. So on this note, we are living here to continue Baba's work, evangelism. You must win a soul to the kingdom of God you must be able to disciple that person. Not just coming to the church, not just dancing and going away, but anchoring Christ as our Lord and our Savior. I want us to pray two prayer points. And you say it with him. Oh Lord, show us mercy for total repentance unto you again in this generation. With the strength to seek God to find him and serve him 
wholeheartedly come upon us in Jesus' name. Hold on to Christ. Repent from your way. Hold to the faith in Christ. It is the only one that can save. No other power. Every other power is fake. And I decree by the mercy of God, by the name of Jesus, every tormenting territorial forces in Nigeria to want to wither down the glory of the church shall be crossed in Jesus' name. Amen. By the power and the blood of Jesus, Christ shall reign in Nigeria. Christ will take over Nigeria. As he came to this forest to be defied, may be defied Nigeria in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Before your name can be written in the book of life, you must be an overcomer. An overcomer is one fighting every day for the gospel ministry, preaching the gospel, and casting away powers and principalities and banning them into their kingdom. At the same time, we must know that in this season in Nigeria, we need Christ. It is only Christ that can save us. No other power. Any other power, forget. Any other power, I say, forget. Christ shall reign. He's taking dominion in your family, Amen. your profession. Amen. On this Galilee ground, Amen. you will see Christ. Amen. And by the mercy of God, you live here today. You are not going the same you came. You are going fully loaded with the anointing of Jesus Christ. Amen. And may God bless you all. Amen. For your name to be written in the book of life, Christ is the answer. Joba Larun laye di tire Ejeki amatele Ejeki amatele Ke joba pelu re